Has there been any word of her? None yet. I do not understand why she displays such disobedience. You know why. She bears the face of her mother. She shames us all. She has always brought shame upon us. In terms of combat, she is the least among us. Her stance always had too much passion about it. Perhaps it is better that our sister chose exile rather than having it forced upon her. The wound on this world, it is centered here. If we succeed in gathering the Jedi, they will come to this place. And if those Jedi are slain, then all that remains of the Order shall be drawn here as well. We will know when the time comes. And I hope our enemies do not. I am an historian and scientist working for the Republic. Although I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more a historian than scientist. Like you, I was looking for some trace of the Jedi. I had heard mention that one of the Jedi Masters had gone there, but I found no trace of them. No. It is something of a mystery why they would exile themselves as they have. It is not the way of the Jedi to vanish in such a way, especially when the Republic is in need of them. I fear that there is something else at work, something that we cannot see. Then again, perhaps the Jedi are hiding simply because so many people hate them these days. What else would you like to know? Before you go, I had a question for you. You came to Dantooine in search of Jedi. Why? What answers do you seek? It has been my experience that Jedi rarely answer such questions, or instead indulge in half-truths. In any case, it seems to me like our goals are compatible. If you would have me, I can apply my knowledge and skills to helping you find the answers you seek. Halt, settler. This is a restricted area. How the hell did you get through the Kinrath? You should leave. This isn't kidnapping, this is bounty hunting. This Jedi is worth a lot of credits on Urshada, and we're collecting. I'm going to say this nice and simple for your little calf-hurting head. Unless you want to wind up dead, leave now. I warned you, but I'm glad you didn't listen. Attack, men! into action without thinking of the consequences. What? You're expecting thanks? 
Kunda is in danger, and you've ruined the best chance of averting a full-scale conflict. Is this a joke to you? People's lives are at stake. Every action has consequences, no matter how small or insignificant they seem. And even the smallest choice has the potential for harm. The Mandalorian Wars was proof of this. Intentions mean nothing of a greater tragedy is caused. Did you think rushing into battle against the Mandalorians did anything but bring more harm to the galaxy? It only served to bring about a second war more dangerous than the first. Countless Jedi died in both conflicts, and everyone who followed Revan and Malak died or returned to the dark side. Except, conveniently, you. Revan acted. You acted. There's no way of knowing what would have happened had you trusted in the Council, much like what you have done today. Enough of this. This is not the time for such arguments. The mercenaries have allied themselves with the Exchange and are planning to attack Kunda. They've been holding off for the right moment. And now, since they lost their captive Jedi, they'll attack immediately. I'm going to try to reach Administrator Adari. Time is of the essence. You are the Jedi I've heard reports of, and I am Azkul, leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. Straight to the point. I like that. I will be equally direct. I am planning to take Kunda, and you're going to help me. You don't need to know the details, but I can tell you, there are a lot of credits involved. According to my reports, I have four times as many soldiers as the militia, and I'm committed to taking Kunda. It is inevitable that I will succeed. If you wish to avoid my men eradicating the people of Dantooine, you will make it easier for me to take Kunda. Of course, I will pay well for your services. There are many ways someone with your abilities can aid us. Before the action begins, I have two main tasks in mind for you. Disable the gun turrets and the traps. Deal with the turrets, however you see fit. Decide quickly. When the militia learns of our attack, they will plant traps around the entrances to Kunda. Disable them. Decide quickly. You'd better reconsider. I can't have a Jedi interfering with my plans. There is a considerable bounty on your kind that I will collect on unless you're working for me. Men, I trust you can handle this Jedi. Are disturbed. I can feel them from a great distance, like a shiver running through you. Echoes. I feel echoes of the Force here. Force-sensitive locations such as this absorb and reflect Force energy. The crystals are the catalyst here. I sense that Revan once passed through here, leaving a strong impression behind in the crystals. Perhaps future Jedi who visit this cave will feel our presence as if seeing our footprints preserved in the soil.
The crystal's bond with you is such that the stronger you become in the Force, the more powerful your crystal will grow. This crystal will make an excellent focus for a lightsaber. I see you have found the elusive Master Rook. He's told me that his rescue complicated our situation to some degree. I can't say that I anticipated that. I thank you for finding him, though. Vrook has informed me that the mercenaries devised a plan of attack to annihilate Kunda itself. I must ask for your aid again, Jedi. Zeron says that even with a plan, the mercenaries have to gather their forces, then coordinate their assault. Our militia is effective at peacekeeping, but isn't prepared for a full-scale battle. If you can do anything to ready them for the reality of it, that would be helpful. Besides that, look around Kunda and see what you can do to strengthen our defenses. I know that we don't have the perimeter turrets online, and that alone could make a significant difference. Zeron says there is a considerable chance they will breach Kunda itself. Anything you can do to slow them down could turn the tide of battle. Here is a Mastercard key that will open all of the security doors inside Kunda. Anything that might aid you in your task, please use. Soon, all the civilians will be evacuated. So if you have any business with them, I suggest you take care of it. Whenever you are ready to finalize the defenses, talk with Zeron. I was right about you. You are trouble. But you might just be the right sort of trouble we need. The mercenaries aren't quick to mobilize, so you have time to do what you need. Or are you ready to finalize the defense plans? I don't know for certain. It could be a day or even a week. We could use people handy with a blaster. We also got a lot of things that could use fixing. Off the top of my head, the three turrets outside Kunda are on the blink. The men who were wounded by the turrets are holed up in the med lab. I've had some men lay traps around Kunda, but nobody here really specializes in demolitions. The side security door to Kunda has been malfunctioning as long as I've been here. We got some broken assault droids that have been collecting dust for the last five years. If I had it my way, I'd recruit any citizen of Kunda that can hold a blaster. Inspecting the perimeter, talking to the troops and coming up with a battle plan. I fought in a war or two, but I'm no general. In my experience, people like you are better at strategy. You want a hand in making the plan, you got it. When you're ready, come back and we can talk about the final plans to defend Kunda. Bolster Kunda's defense. I will hurry to the mercenary camp and delay their assault however I can. I imagine that the mercenaries have got two goals in this whole thing. Kill me and kill the administrator. The rest of the settlers won't have courage to resist if they succeed. The Administrator's locked up in her office tight, which means that the mercs have to go through us and Kunza's defenses. It isn't gonna be easy. I suspect we're gonna have to fight on the inside. They've got three entrances they're gonna try and break in. Here's the front door, the security door on the side, and the garage door in back. We got three squads of militia. We can assign people to the front, back, or inside. Backside has to guard two entrances. The front will have to fight more people, and the inside will have to deal with any that break through. So, where do you think the first squad should be deployed? First squad is most experienced. The only squad that could go blaster to blaster against the mercs. Second squad has a lot of passion, but no experience. Third squad is new and not trained too well, and they may break in combat. They need a good leader to make them effective. So, where do you think the first squad should be deployed? The battles that had the least dying were always led by Jedi. I'm gonna go with what you think. Where do you want the second squad? First squad, third squad is fresh recruit. First squad is the most ex- Where do you-
for a squad is the most th where do you want the all right where do you want the fine by me the last question is where do you want to go either the front or the back i'll take whichever one you don't that way both sides have leadership the back i suppose that there is more ground to cover with the two entrances all right i'll take the front once the fighting starts you gotta stay in your area we both have to guard our half of the battlefield. Come over to me and the mercs will just charge straight into Kunda. Thanks to you, they're gonna have a tougher job. That's about it. Now we just need to dig in and wait for the mercs to come. Afraid not, we don't have much time. We got reports that Ice Cole's almost ready. Let's get ready for the mercenaries. If we fall here, all of Dan Twain falls with us. What you see, soldier. They're immobilizing the militia. Looks like a lot of activity down there. They've been warned. It won't be of any use. The plan doesn't change. Captains, prepare your men. Their leader, Administrator Tarina, must not survive the battle. Everything else is secondary to that objective. Soldiers, fall back inside. So you are the Jedi. I take it you are responsible for the surprises we've had during this battle. Stand aside. Our quarrel is with a distinguished administrator. This isn't your problem. She 
she's inconvenient and doesn't know the chain of command, she will pay for that. You have no idea who you're talking to. I was going to spare your worthless life. I see I was in error. I was trained at Malak's Academy. Your tricks won't work on me. You're just another dead Jedi to me. I didn't sign on for this cold-blooded slaughter, Ascol. I was wondering when you would betray me, Dopak. I'll send your final wages to your children, along with a detonator. Sorry I was held up, but it looks like I've arrived in time to pull you out of your predicament. Kill them all. You can be sure that Dantooine will not forget how the Jedi protected us from this place. We are a humble community, and this conflict has greatly diminished our resources. I hope this reward will be sufficient. I am humbled by your generosity. I will put this to good use. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much work to do. Dantooine will be slow to rebuild, but I am confident now that we will one day achieve prosperity. Kunda is safe in no small part due to you. I feel certain that the Administrator wouldn't have made it without your assistance. I may have misjudged you. In any case, I am free to talk about whatever you wish. You have seen the end of your trial? That was intended only for the Jedi Council. I suppose there is something I should show you. It will keep you alive long enough to prove useful. <laughs> I don't know how you learned that so quickly. Still, your form is sloppy. Keep practicing to tighten it up and you'll be fine. The more worlds we travel to, the more questions I have. It's not just the hardships of the people, but something more. You are right. But there is something more at work here. Yes. These dead worlds, they... Well, they have a pattern to them. They were all touched by the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War. But sometimes, well, I feel as if they are all connected in some other way. The attacks on Katar, Telos itself, the decay on Dantooine. Something is wrong with life. The connections have been damaged, sickened. Sometimes I feel like I almost understand and then it just slips away. So close. No, I do not. But I do think there is some greater plan at work here. Perhaps. Dantooine is only one of the worlds. It was only the start of the journey. I would like to study the other locations. It is curious that the Jedi Masters chose those worlds to travel to. I wonder if the two are linked, but I know not how.
There was a pattern to Revan's attacks during the Jedi Civil War. He sought to convert Jedi, not kill them. But that is not all. In fact, he fought to keep the infrastructure intact, killed certain political leaders that would lead to destabilization. First Patriarch Lelin Dor of Sirocco, the Corellian diplomat Mimis Yoon, and Yusunus of Achani. No, you're correct. The pattern ends with Malak. At that point, worlds die indiscriminately. Or seem to. Taris, Dantooine, all become targets during this time. I think he was trying to unify the galaxy against some other threat. I do not know. And that concerns me. Is there? Must be hearing things. But for a moment. 